Now that we've successfully built our first real-time audience, let's talk about some common settings we should take into consideration when building audiences. So moving back into creating a new audience, the first thing to consider is that you can give your audience both an internal and external name. This can be helpful, for example, when users of a downstream tool are expecting a certain naming convention, which is different than what you want the audience to be called in MParticle. In this example, I want the audience name to be called Apple in MParticle, but orange in the connected downstream tool. The second thing you should consider is the date range. So by default, MParticle will only consider the last 30 days of event history on any given user. This can be extended up to 90 days for an additional cost. And standard audiences are best suited for use cases that need to leverage more historic events. Finally, on this screen, it's important to consider the various inputs you would like an audience to pull data from. As a rule of thumb, the more inputs that need to be considered, the slower the initial calculation is. So from a performance perspective, it's advisable that you only select the inputs that are required for a particular list. That being said, you do, of course, have the option of selecting all MParticle inputs. Moving back into our mobile purchasers audience, you'll notice the audience details tab. Here's where you're going to be able to get details on things like what the audience is called, who created it, as well as the various inputs and outputs that this audience is pulling data from and forwarding data to. You'll also be able to edit your audience. So going back to, for example, the external name, you could change that at a later point in time, as well as change the various inputs that this audience should consider. And finally, we provide you the ability to actually download audiences as a CSV. So what you could do is select the various device IDs as well as user IDs that you want to be part of the CSV, which can then be scheduled to be delivered to your uh, inbox. It's important to note that any audience can be connected to multiple audience outputs. In this example, you might recall that we connected our audience to indicative. But assuming that we have other audience partners that we want to forward this list to, we can select connect output, select an additional partner configuration, and add this connection as well. And the idea here is that MParticle is always maintaining a real-time up-to-date list that can be synchronized across multiple providers in your ecosystem.